<laughs> world champion as my warm-up act. That was outstanding. Yeah. I'm glad to set him up for you, Kevin. Thank you, Lance. That was great. What'd you guys think of Lance Miller? Yeah. Amazing, huh? So some of you, a lot of you raised your hands that you're looking to speak and how do you make that work? So anybody, since we're going to do a thing on video, would anybody like to do a quick video testimonial, just a quick sound bite, like five seconds, not five minutes, on Lance's speech, on Lance's presentation? Come on, now's the time to step up out of your comfort zone. Stand up, tell us your name, where you live, if you like. Hi, I'm Nick Adler. Can I have permission to videotape you? Yes, sir. Megan, what did you think of Lance Miller's presentation this morning? It was awesome. He drew everyone in and made everyone feel like we could fix our lives, and we should. Outstanding. Thank you for sharing. All right, that was great. I'm going to do one more. I want to talk about a lesson there, right? When you're doing video, you did fantastic, so don't take any of this personal. It was great. We're going to use it, in a, if it's okay with you, in a promotional video for Lance. Testimonials are fun. But when you do something like that, you want to stare into the camera for a second or two, and then when you finish, don't just finish, say, okay, boom, because we got to cut there, right? So you finish, you smile for a second or two, and just let it hang, right? That's perfect, though. It's fantastic. Who else wants to do one? Come on, anybody? It was a great presentation. I hope you got value from it. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Okay. We'll hook okay, somebody I'm else. Here. You're like, well, you just bagged on me. Why would they do it? You're going to bag on me. Come on. I'll Lord, you stand you up. <laughs> I want you to come up here because I want to get the background. The, the video, it's all about the composition, right? As the legendary actor or director Ron Howard, an actor too, Ron Howard would say, it doesn't matter how big your crew is or how much money you spend, it's all that matters is what you capture in the frame lines. So it's all about the composition. So I'm going to have you stand there. You're going to face the video. It's going to be here. Oh, okay. So stand there. There's your mark. And get some tape down there for it. And then we got a full room, so the composition's fantastic. Hi, Lordy. So what did you think of Lance Miller's presentation? Awesome. He was practical to the point and said exactly what I needed to hear to help my team get to the next level. Fantastic. Give her a round of applause. That was excellent. And Meg, thank you, too. That was outstanding, both of you. Truly outstanding. Good stuff. And Lance, I'm sure you're very grateful. You can slip him a buck later or something. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Kevin Graham. I'm thrilled to be here. Why video? Modern social and mobile dynamics create an insatiable appetite for video. Right? I mean your smartphone and your Facebook and all those other social platforms. Video is as close to being there as you can get. And people love video. It's amazing. So let's look at some statistics real quick. Seven, can you see that okay? I don't know if we can do anything with the lights, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a little better? Yeah. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. 70% of teenagers trust YouTubers over traditional celebrities. 82% of Twitter users watch video content on Twitter. One third of online activity is spent watching video. Anybody online daily? 92% <laughs> of mobile video viewers share videos with others. So it's shareable and contagious. Landing pages with videos increase conversions by 80%. Whoa. That's phenomenal. Now, I want to do an audience audio audition. There's an alliteration, huh? Audience, audio, audition. Anybody ever heard of the name Bulova? Yeah. yeah. Watches. Watches. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask you all to stand up for a minute. Stand up if you would. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but thank you for standing up. I want to audition as a group for a television commercial. And the statement we're going to read is, America runs on Bulova time. Okay, we'll all say it together on three. One, two, three. America, America runs, runs on Boulevard time. time. Yeah, that feel good? Yeah. One more time just to feel better. Ready? One, two. America, America runs on Boulevard time. time. Outstanding, thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're welcome to grab a seat. And I'm going to show you, if I can get to it here without messing up our presentation, the world's first television commercial it's nine or ten seconds long. It cost nine or ten dollars, so a buck a second, and it was in 1941. And you just did all the audio in. Hopefully, the sound works. I hope it does. America runs 
thoughtful of a time. That was, are we good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. America runs on full of a time. Just like you just said, that was the first television commercial. Let's see if I can get back to, am I yeah. back? Okay. That was 1941, Brooklyn Dodgers and Philadelphia Phillies. Nine or 10 bucks they spent on a television commercial. And now we are in a day and age where you can do video. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Reaching Dream Fulfillment. Reaching Dream Fulfillment. Thank you for being here today. We hope you love this, ses this session. Thank you. Nice job. Tell us your name. Robert Luria. Robert Luria? Yes. Outstanding, Robert. Nice job. He's got a YouTube channel. He's taking it and he's going to broadcast it. That's exciting. It's like having ABC here. <laughs> it is. It's, you got a free medium to throw out your content. It's amazing. A lot of you said you want to be speakers. So let's talk about that. First of all, my background. I've been in big tech a long time. I, last year, decided to pivot to video for business growth. So I got the website video for business growth. You can get that to it a lot of ways, including the acronym, the B, the number four, and BG.com. And do video for business growth. Production, placement, and promotion. Okay, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Now, I decided to start a family of media brands. Why? Because I didn't know a lot about video. I didn't have a great, I had a good camera, but not a great camera. A lot of technical gaps, and I literally have produced and published, you can check out my YouTube channels, over 200 videos in just the last few months. Most of them are technical interviews because I want to stay close to my roots of advanced technology, market penetration, complexity, strategic value. Video is high value, but it's also a noisy space. Everybody in LA has got a camera, right? So I'm trying to stay true to my roots of technology. So I started a family of media brands, KG Wow, Remarkable Video for Business Growth, KG Now, Insightful, Non-Political News Stories, KG Pow, Sizzling Reviews that pop, pop, pop. One of you guys is gonna get one of those. KG How, Modern Empowerment in Seconds, and KG Bow, Spiritual Content for Love and Aspiration. And I did that primarily because I'm kind of all over the place, as you can see, right? But I don't want my market to feel that. So I tried to create five distinct compartments so I can go out and create content, solve my technical gaps on video, and produce content and park it in unique places so I don't look like such a spaz, right? So the now is where, KG now is where I do most. I go to trade shows. The 3D show was up in Anaheim two or three weeks ago. I went up and in one day did 41 interviews. Hustled around with my tripod and my camera. Hey, you want to do a promotion on your stuff? Did a technical interview for two or three minutes and over the next few days, I edited and uploaded it. Gave them the link and they send it out. Some of them got like 12 links and some of them got like 1,200 views, right? Some of them socialize it heavily and some of them don't. That's on them and we're gonna empower them to do that. And that's my funnel for clients, future clients, for a video for business growth. So that's my crazy idea of how to make this work, right? I don't have all the answers, but I got some ideas, so we'll see. And then I have another company called Empowered Sales Training, custom programs for sales success that I've had for a number of years. Got about, I didn't even realize this because I really didn't focus much on my YouTube the last few years, but I've got about 450 subscribers on that channel. And I've been working my butt off on the other media channels about four months, I got like 12 subscribers, so <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Anybody in sales? All right, I'm going to give it to you, Meg, front. Now, they say give it to the person in the back and yeah. hand it to the person in front, so everybody touches it along the way, right? Victor yeah. Broski, former chair of the Founders District Speakers Bureau, who Woo, gave us that secret years ago. We're going to give it to Meg, John, and get one to you, too. That is my free guide. Hold on, let me hold it up and show people. This is a sales guide you can get online. The top 10 reasons sales professionals fail on the phone. Let me just give you one. Let me pick a number if you want to take a shot at Number four. Number four. Let's see what number four is. a good one. <laughs> Number four reason why sales professionals fail on the phone. Actually, that's number six. It was a pretty good one, too. Sales professionals don't ask for the order. You need the A-S-K to G-E-T. In most sales scenarios, you need to ask for the order several times before getting a yes. Be prepared to ask the prospect to do something. The next step in the sales process is your goal. A-B-C, always be closing. Most people misinterpret what that mantra is all about. It's not about lambasting your prospect with an endless barrage of closing questions. It's about maintaining momentum, momentum toward the close. So 
that's the top 10 reasons sales professionals fail and phone. That was number four, Meg, thank you. I hope you find that valuable. I hope you share it. It's a mini book, which is kind of a cool format for speakers because it's not a card, it's not a one sheet. You know, hopefully she won't throw that away. She'll leave it in the coffee oh, shop or vice president of sales circulate or other people, right? It's got some lively, some life to it. Anyway, so that's my background, but really what I'm all about, soccer. That's me at the Galaxy Games. That's where I do a lot of my speaking, where I'm screaming about the Galaxy. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm just turning the corner out of deep depression because back on October 10th, USA lost to a country with half the population of Orange County. 350 million people or someone like that in the USA, and our soccer team lost to a country with half the population of Orange County. It doesn't make any sense. It's high school up the street could beat that team. So we're not in a rush. I'm sad. It would have been my sixth World Cup. My son was nine with me in South Africa, 13 in Germany, 17 in Brazil, and it would have been 1921. So it would have been in Russia if it canceled because uh, it wasn't to be. Anyway, this presentation is called Zero to Video in 45 Minutes, but let me tell you, you're no more a zero with video than you are with food. Okay? <laughs> Have you ever eaten before? Right? You're not a zero with food. You've watched TV before, right? None of you are a zero with video. So let's talk about some of the aspects. Anybody do video production or anybody else that wants to comment on your video production experience? Yes, Meg. I do a video, in fact, have videoed an interview with, with Lance, one of my best interviews. Outstanding. But I do it on Zoom. I use Zoom and I give the people who got who I interview, I give them a link to that. Very cool. Who else? I Stand up and tell us, Bob. Tell us who you are. Tell us your channel again. Uh, Reaching Dream Fulfillment. And I have uh, interviewed uh, Lionel twice. I liked his energy. Uh, one was about podcasting and how to get started and what podcasting is because a lot of people don't even know what the latest technology is. Right. And also just a basic uh, interview of him as a speaker, motivational speaker, author, Cool. Nice job. Thank Give you. Give a round of applause. Too. Outstanding. And for the other use, who, those of you, did I say that right? Those of you who are involved with Toastmasters, if you don't know who Toastmasters is, the world's leading organization developed thinking, listening, and speaking skills. It was started right here in Orange County almost 100 years ago and is now in some 140 countries of 385,000 members. Crazy value. But they have, in Founders District here, Founders District TV. John, you do Founders District TV, operates camera number one. You want to tell us about Founders District TV real quick? Stand up if you do. For about five years, uh, we've been um, making, a, we have a production studio for one evening a month. Uh, we play record an interview and an editorial. We're switching the format starting in July. Uh, opportunities. So check it out online. To see. Thank you, John. Give him a round of applause, please. <laughs> Founders TV, if you want to check it out as part of Postmasters, please do. Thank you for sharing some of your input. What makes great video? You tell me. I've got some things I'm going to show you, but you tell me. What makes great video to you? What makes great food to you? What great makes, makes great video to you? Concise, clear, and good uh, presentation. I mean, I'm visual, so I have to see what's in the video. So it is the visual, right? But concise and clear, I love that. I call that consumable. I'm a soccer guy, so it's 90 minutes plus stoppage, and video is 90 seconds plus stoppage, right? It's got to be consumable. <laughs> what makes great video, anyway? There's no wrong answer. It's your opinion. Yes? When it's entertaining in some way, like it grabs your attention, so you actually want to keep watching it. Right, right. There's a lot of celebrities on YouTube who created controversy, created provoking information, kind of poked at people, and got them to come for the controversy, but they stay for the content, which is interesting. So it's entertaining. Thank you. Yes. Educational. Educational. Informational, right? It, it empowers you for to grow, right? That's fantastic. Yes. Emotional. Emotional. Emotion sells. You know, like great Zig Ziglar said, for every prospect you lose because you are too enthusiastic, you lose 100 because you weren't enthusiastic enough. Enthusiasm sells. That was my first lesson selling newspapers as a kid, running door to door. I ran door to door because I realized that I could sell more newspapers if I ran between the houses. 
The guy across the street, he was on a third house, fourth house. I'm going to run. So I run to the next house, and then two or three houses. I'm all the way up here. Of course, I was so horrified. I'd knock on the door, and I'd pray they wouldn't answer. <laughs> I'd like run to the next house. I'd be out halfway up a block. But what I learned in that was that if you run between the houses, you get out of breath. You lose your breath. But you know what that does? That creates energy. That creates excitement and enthusiasm sells. It's a fundamental lesson in sales. What makes great video? Here's some things I've put up that makes compelling, relevant content, consumable, well lit. It's got to be visual, right? You got to be able to see it. Killer audio. I'm convinced that audio in video is more important than the video. And I'm not the only one of that mindset. You need good audio. You'll sit through a tough to see video more than you'll sit through one that has terrible audio. Right. So killer audio is very important. Passion and purposeful, and in my view, it needs to have story. And that's why I think I've got a future at this. I'm still trying to make it work. But video for business growth with technology, because I joke for 25 years if technologists could talk to customers, I wouldn't have a career. Because I don't really know tech. I know technology. I mean, Einstein said, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. And a lot of technologists, they know it so well, that's like, just get down in the weeds. They don't bring it into story. They don't bring it into business value. They don't make it purposeful to move the project along, to move the sale along. So that's what I believe my value is. So how would you use video? Or maybe you already do, but how would you use it? If you walked out of here today and felt empowered for video success, you could go out and produce and place and promote video to forward your business interest or your speaking. How would you use it? Anybody at all want to share? How would you? Yes. Please tell us your name. Oh, my name's Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Kathleen. I think I would use video to launch a movement. You know? To launch a movement. That's powerful, right? And some people talk about things and people, but some people <laughs> talk about ideas, right? Fantastic. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt or something along the lines, but that's great. Any particular movement? Um, to help underdogs and um, <laughs> combat corporate greed. Ooh, big challenges there. We got a little bit of corporate greed, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. You don't know it yet. We do. Anyway, who else? How would you use video? Come on, anybody. Yes. So, uh, my name is Burja. Thank you, Burja. And sorry for I am late. No, but you're I'm on time. The guy was first before we just a warm up act. He was just a world <laughs> world champion of public speaking. You know, it's like the previews before the real move. I'm just kidding. Man. I'm totally kidding, brother. I love you, man. You were fantastic. Well, I, I, I know how I use video now, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Yes, bro. How would you I, use video? I would do use the video to motivate people with uh, sharing some stories or tips. Very good. Anybody else? Yes. I use video to unlock the secrets of success for others and for myself. All right. Success leaves clues. Yes, in the back. Please tell us your name. If you want to stand, you can. My name is Regina. Good morning. Good morning. I would use a video to connect with people in the other parts of the world. Outstanding. I'm from the Philippines, so I use video and I would connect. Outstanding. I love that. And I'll tell you a story. I, I, I was at the Los Angeles Convention Center doing Display Week, the 57th, 56th year. The Society of Information Display, founded in Los Angeles, had their Display Week show. Amazing stuff. I'm talking about foldable LED, MOLD, cell phones that can fold both ways, electronic books that can bend like paper and they're electronic and digital, the information changes. I mean, really powerful stuff coming. So I a lot of them are Chinese or, or Taiwanese. So I, you know, oh, well, I can't do a video, I only speak them. So what? I'll ask you something. T teach me something in Chinese. How do you say hello in Chinese? What is it? Uh, Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. So he says, oh, hi, this is Kevin Graham at KG now. Ni hao. <laughs> and I held the microphone there for like two minutes, and the guy went off on some Chinese stuff that I had no idea what he was, I mean, what he was talking about, but I had no idea what the words said or meant. <laughs> Video's got some views. There's a lot of people in China. So yeah, just share the, share the information with the world it's like abc's here guys you have this free medium to go put up a video and anybody with internet access in the world can watch it you think anybody's got internet access around the world i mean in africa they worried about putting up phone lines how are we going to get a telephone infrastructure and then wireless came along and well skip that problem we don't need any telephone poles we got wireless right so yeah you can share your information with the world okay we're going to come back to this 
not to this, but to how you would use video, but this is how people use video, the types of businesses, types of videos businesses already invested in. This is from Vid, uh, Vidyard, which is an amazing source of, of video content, and this is based on like some astronomical number of videos, like hundreds of thousands of videos and just some crazy numbers. So a massive study. So explainer videos, product feature videos, how to educational customer testimonials, thought leader interviews, talking head style videos, live action videos, pre-recorded demos, live streaming, and cultural content. And there's another slide I wanna show you that, that was part of the same study where they show what types of companies primarily invest in videos and the heavyweights are tech companies and some of those bigger funded companies that are well resourced. But the video is coming to everybody and there's an insatiable appetite for it and you've got an opportunity to create video that can reach your audience. Now, what do you need to make a video? Anybody, what do you need? Camera. Camera, gotta have a camera. Oh, or maybe you just use your phone. A camera. Maybe you just use your phone. Uh, what else? Audio. Audio, maybe you just use your phone or maybe upgrade a little bit. Wireless lab, mic's nice. You can figure it out if it works. I pray you're working. <laughs> you shoot video and then you close the camera and you just pray until you get home and download it. Look at it, that it's, the lights are on. Did I hit record? It was the audio there. Lighting. Lighting? lighting, it helps to have good lighting, right? <laughs> Interior office space is horrendous for lighting, right? It's just, it's tough. But there's a lot of editing you can do with lighting. And the sun, everybody has the sun, right? Even when you're indoors, you still have the power of the sun. Like if I was smart, I could have adjusted those shades to put more light up this way, right? So there's lots you can do to take care of the natural environment. Now, Southern California, we're blessed with sunshine, but a lot of professional photographers would say that's a curse because they love the marine layer. You know, the morning sun's nice, the afternoon sun's the best because it's softer and it shoots in. You know, the noontime sun is just throwing shadows down on you, right? Mm -hmm. So use the natural lighting. What else do you need to make video? Purpose. Purpose? Yeah. It helps. <laughs> it helps. We've all seen videos that lack purpose, right? I mean, even those cat videos seem to have some kind of purpose, I guess. But yeah, it helps. What else? Anybody else? The message. The message? I can find it. A tripod is a major investment. I was at the one camera store and I was looking at the equipment. He says, oh, the tripod's the biggest decision you'll make. And he was kind of right. You yeah. need, you know, because we talk about good video, the handheld, no matter how good you are, no matter how well you strap it on, it's bouncing around. And when you finally watch it, it's, oh my God, give me some seasick pills. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're called, I forget. You can spend hundreds of dollars on a tripod where you can really get one at Walmart for like 35. Pretty good. I'll take your word for it. Yes. <laughs> well, my belief uh, is that you need a professional team. You need a team? You need a team? I went to the press conference of all the fire chiefs in Los Angeles and California. They had the number one, I'm talking about thousands, probably tens of thousands maybe, of firemen across the Southland, the number one. L.A. County Fire Chief, the number one L.A. City Fire Chief, the number one guy for OCFA, the number one guy for CAL FIRE, the California, the number one guy for the U.S. Forestry Service as part of the Department of Agriculture's Western team was there at the L.A. County Museum. It opens again, or reopens, in Bellflower next month in a couple weeks. It's a phenomenal place. they got all kinds of equipment. They did a press conference because we had more fire danger in 2018 we've had in a long, long time. They do an annual press conference. So I'm there, you know, I'm, I'm like making my way back from a convention and I'm heading down to Orange County and I got all, you know, I have dozens of videos I got to edit and whatnot. I'm, I'm uploading them as I drive with my little card reader on my laptop. And they hear on the radio, oh, KNX, yeah, we're going to have a press conference in 45 minutes in Belfast. I'm like, Arr! You know, I set up that little tripod. There's a big satellite trucks. They got the teams of people, you know, like it's ABC Channel 4 or whoever they are. They got like three people setting up the guy on camera. Here I am, my measly little lap or tripod and my camera, and I set up. And one guy says, hey, man, put you up front. Puts me up front. So I got to compete with them. I got interviews. And they were impressed. Seriously. Like, I asked them purposeful questions. I wasn't some reporter with no life experience. I understand market penetration. I asked them about you know, how well resourced they are. What's the real fire danger? What precautions can people take? How do they work from an interagency standpoint? They're shared resources. Tell me something about you personally. Oh, you're new to Orange County, Chief Fennessy. You come from San Diego. Do you live in Orange County? Yeah, he felt pressure to be in Orange County. It was personal. And then I got home. 
in my XLR cable. Let me down. And I had five interviews with chiefs of fire departments in California that were quality. I mean, I could feel, maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes I think I'm better than I am. You know, I referee soccer every game I finish. I'm thinking, oh, people are going to come over and just tell me how great you were. Well, that's the most crazy thing. And, you know, people are going to kill me in the parking lot, you know. So maybe I, I'm, I'm an optimist too much. But they were good interviews. And I didn't have any audio. I know, it still makes me sad. Not as sad as you as soccer, but I'm turning that. Down. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, what do you need to make good video? Video camera, maybe cell phone, microphone, lighting, tripod, thank you very much. And understanding of video production. Five awesome video books. This one's phenomenal. How to shoot video that doesn't suck. Great book. In the blink of an eye. This is phenomenal. I think it's Walter Murch, major editor. One of his major movies, he did on Final Cut Pro, that big consumer, prosumer tool I use for editing. In the blink of an eye, he talks about the philosophy of editing film. You think this is deep? It's not that deep. If I ask you to look at that flag and look at that speaker, go ahead, please. Look at the flag, look at the speaker, thank you. Did you look at anything in between? Mm -hmm. No, because as humans, we're used to cutting. You look at there, you cut, and then you look at there. That's why cutting so fun, so easy. Just a hard cut. People are used to it. They blink. So it's not overly complex. I mean, there's lots of ways to do it. You can cross dissolve, and you can slide, and you can do all sorts of fancy stuff. That's cool. But in the blink of an eye, that book talks about how we naturally, as human beings, edit on our own. You look at the flag, you look at the speaker, you edit everything in between. You didn't care. It's phenomenal reading. Cinematic storytelling is really interesting. It talks about 100 different ways that you can through cinema and techniques from camera placement to all kinds of other things. And it really is a phenomenal, it's like a coffee book, it's really phenomenal. Actually gets into a lot of the major stuff. Making a good script, some nice stuff. And then Ty Ford's audio boot camp is kind of neat. And there's lots of other ones too. I've been, I've been just consuming different video stuff and master classes and stuff like that, trying to solve some technical gaps because I'm, I'm all in. Okay, let's talk about video placement and promotion. We talked a little bit about what you need for production. What makes a great video? Let's talk about placement and promotion. Because you can have great content, but if nobody sees it, does it really matter? I mean, if the tree falls in the woods, does it really make a sound? Nobody's there to hear it, right? So I believe that content is king. You gotta have good content. But it's really about placement and promotion. So YouTube, your website, and other options. Anybody got a comment on that? Anybody placed video? You do a YouTube channel, do you do a website, or do you use Vimeo or other options? Uh, right now, I'm using uh, the Movie Maker, and I got lessons on how to use, uh, give me a second. Zoom. No, not Zoom, not Zoom. I'm drawing a blank boom. right now. No, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> Adobe Premiere. Okay. Adobe Boom Premiere. <laughs> Adobe Premiere. Cool. Exactly. Good stuff. As an editing tool. Exactly. Okay. And tell us what Zoom is. Zoom is a... A program that you become a, you can use for free. Uh, it's it's a download that you can be a member of it, and you can you can do zooms that last much. Hello. Spend a lot of time on these videos and on my journey that I am trying to create a better life for me and others eventually. Of course, we need to take care of ourselves first. Nevertheless, if you like the videos that you've seen and they're inspiring you, and you like watching the journey of me creating a new life that I can be passionate and proud of, then click on the subscribe button and get or give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. This is a journey that I'm going on and creating the best life I can and stretching my level to the highest, the absolutely highest, with all my God-given abilities. So subscribe and watch this journey unfold. Thank you.